Oops. Yeah, that happens a lot, man. Depending on your, like what level MMR you're at, I see a lot of just people that should not be playing carries. Let's see how we break up all these wood pieces. <laughs> They're kind of tricky. I'm here, I'm your statue. Your heart is a magnet. I'm coming at you. Girl, you're my target. I'm aiming at you. You're a comet. I'm trying to catch you. We can break any rule they ever taught you. Forget about anything they Maybe this guy doesn't break all the way, but splinters up towards the top here. We'll, we'll add the line work a little bit later. I think this will look pretty good. This guy was a little too much. Putting it up too many times. What do you got going there? Uh, two left shoes? What is that? Uh, the sign that you're uh, working on, trying to learn C brush. Oh, cool, man, right on.
<laughs> the first time I spent 20 minutes analyzing. Uh, that's because he wasn't asking for it. Any suggestions and things to watch out for? Wow, there he goes. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's a full size. Okay. Uh, so, well, let me ask you this. Uh, what what stage are you at right now? So I know what, uh, what to actually constructively criticize for you. So you finish sculpting everything, you're probably painting him and trying to pose him. Okay. So model wise, you Did you already pose him? If not, you probably want to model your arms a little bit farther out so you can work around your model a lot easier. Or in a position where he might be standing the most. I imagine he's not going to be standing like this most of the time. Probably be doing something with his arms, so you want to fold his arms a little bit. Uh, as far as the rest of the model, your leather straps look extremely thin. Uh, you, they they look very like they look like you know like the plastic straps that you get like on kids' costumes. It looks that kind of thin. You want to add thickness to your cloth, especially leather things like that. Uh, as far as weight for your model, your cloth needs a little bit of work. It's very... It's just following the shapes of your model at the moment, instead of actually having weight to it and creating the creases that cloth creates, especially when you have leather straps across it, from it, or a, a, head, a, a, a weighted hood, you know, that will create more weight in some of these sections, some straighter parts. I mean, depending on the fabric as well, right? But you are missing a little bit of the weight that creates um, folds on cloth. Right now, it's very... Um, it looks very early on on your model. So I would suggest you start looking at how cloth behaves depending on their weight and when people have clothes on. Uh, they usually have very distinct lines that, uh, that create some S-curves and things like that depending on where you're putting the, the wrinkles or where you have pressure coming in and things like that. You also need some, pr uh, some weight on your, on your sculpting altogether. So these straps would actually have some weight if they're being pulled down by the backpack in the back instead of being so uh, loose, you know, they would look uh, tighter across the top parts and loosen up a little bit towards the bottom. So weight is one of the biggest things when you're sculpting, whether it's cloth, straps, items and characters, muscle, you know, everything has weight to it and it creates a very realistic feel um, the, the more you learn and the more you sculpt all those things out. Uh, as far as your fur, it really depends on the density of your model, if you're gonna go something more cinematic or not. Uh, right now, it seems like you have a little bit of a mix between two things. Uh, the fur on his arms looks really very, quite small, and then as you get closer to his face, it looks like he went a little more stylized and a little bit flatter, and a little more H-polish, if you will. So I would try and maybe push that onto the arms a bit more, and if it is stylized, I would push those that scale of detail that I have on there a little bit larger, so you see those things come out. It looks like it's going to be more of a cartoony character anyways. So you might want to emphasize those things a little bit and maybe do a little bit of a, an ink pass on some of the sections like around his eye and... Same, the, same weight thing goes for the, the strap ac across his eyes. Uh, your nose looks a little bit off. You get like a really sharp top edge there, but it looks very uh, squiggly. You have to, you know, for stylized stuff, you have to be really nice and smooth on your curves. And, you know, tr try and work on that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. The poly painting, 
It looks like you have some funky material on your on your green. It looks like like you know, like that balloon material. Uh, I don't know if you if this is supposed to be like a shiny cloth or something, but yeah, you just have to be careful with the materials you're using in ZBrush. I'm sure you're gonna render this somewhere else. It's just for the hell of it, but I'm just giving you feedback on the image that I'm seeing. I'm not sure where you're going with it. Um, as far as character design goes. Um, I'm not sure what you're going for in this design. Um, and I'm, I might sound like I'm being overcritical, but this is how we look at things, you know, in the industry. Uh, so if this guy has goggles on and he's got a hood and a little handkerchief and a backpack, I'm not sure what he's supposed to be, or what his history is, or where he's been, or where he's going. You know, these things are not don't really form a, something that I can kind of put, put my finger on. And are those are those straps? Or he's wearing are those gloves? I guess he's wearing gloves. He's got like black gloves, and those are the, his his uh, uh, braces part of the glove there. So that's why the first stops there. The color kind of threw me off, I guess. But yeah, I guess you have gloves on him. Okay. So yeah, I mean the, he's got like aviator glasses or something. But then the cloth stuff kind of throws that off. He goes more into fantasy. So try and keep those things in line as well, man. And also, just try and maybe push the character design a little bit more, you know, try to give this guy a little bit more of uh, history with some items that I might be carrying or something else that, you know, so, like the goal is maybe linked with the backpack in some way, maybe it's a parachute on his backpack, if he's, if he's an aviator little dude or if he's more of a, a traveler, maybe, I don't know, you know, try and think of all these things together and how they work together to really push the character and make it more, uh, more unique. And also leave room for people to make up their own stories with some articles or something that happened to his cloth. You know, maybe part of it's burnt off and he has an item in his backpack that, you know, sticking out. So maybe, you know, you, you leave some, some speculation in your designs for more of a history for your character. And people can make that up in their minds, but you still need that base design for your character that comes across uh, more unified. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I can say about, about what you got so far, man. There's gonna be a, a wrench in his backpack. Thanks a bunch. Ah, oh, yeah, you're welcome, dude. So, what what kind of character is he? Like, what's what's what kind of class is he, or what what where's he going? What has he done? He's not a death spreading. <laughs> I didn't think that. What the hell was that, Seabrush? That was kind of weird. He's a mechanic type of act. He fixes stuff and uh, stuff in the sewers and sells it. Oh, okay. Merchant kind of... Okay. Merchant mechanic dude. Yeah, I would rip off his clothes a lot more. Rip them up and add a lot more grunge. From uh, the oil and the stuff that he, he messes around with, especially around his fingers and his gloves. And some marks around his cloth that where he wipes his hands, you know, in the right sections, you know, if you imagine wiping your hands, dirty up that part, maybe that's right where he brushes his shit off. Think about how he acts and pull that into the character. 
Oh shit, Ashney. There you are. <laughs> How do you add me on Skype? I tell you what, send me a message on uh, on Twitch right now, and just give me your Skype, and I'll send you uh, an invite. Okay. Done! Alright, let me see. I'll check real quick. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget. Uh, must be lagging. Got nothing yet. I'll keep checking though. Ah, there it goes. Now it shows up. Ashen at Ashen. So if you guys don't know, uh, Ash here, she streams uh, a lot of Dota. She streams some other games too, but mostly Dota. Dota gaming. Super fun to watch her stream if you guys wanna... You're always up for watching a little bit of Dota with that really cool girl. Uh, just right click her name right here and uh, throw her a follow guys and check her out. Super, super cool person. She was cosplaying, uh, what was it, Luna at TI5, and she looked really good. She did a really good job. Hey, boy. <laughs> Oh, well, that's an easy Skype name. There we go. Gotcha. You're gonna cosplay this set at 4.5k follows? Uh, what set? Obviously not this Clink set. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Ash was also thinking of doing our Queen of Pain that we did for Dendi. Or with Dendi, I should say. I think this line follows way too closely. I think I want to break this guy up a little bit here somewhere. Uh, let's close him off here. Have those guys go up. That's way better. Oh crap, wrong two. Some of the wood. Mm. Oh, no, that falls the bottom part too much. Whoops. I'm gonna bring this guy up right here. Little piece. I am lost with no direction. Out here walking. I'll work out. Succubus set, right? Oh, the, the Queen of Pain? Yeah, yeah, totally. Vampire. Way more vampire-ish. Where 
We're gonna break this guy up pretty far up. And we'll go all the way around. Round and round it goes. Up. Oops. Alright, that's looking witty. And we still need to go into the skull itself, the, the medallion, and uh, do our nice little ink pass and clean up as well. Since we had to subdivide to get the, the framework for the outside of the metal going for the the wheel of the boat. But now we can go in here and clean this up really nice. Keep some of these lines to just keep that kind of skull bone feel. Oh man, symmetry should really be on at this point. Forgot about it. Alright, we'll keep it on now. Oh, no worries, left shoes. Yeah, I mean, just uh, look at, like, even besides live workshop stuff, just look at videos and see how people, you know, work and how they use the brushes. And then try and replicate it the same, you know, if somebody made an arm or whatever it is, just try and copy it straight up and just learn how that was created. And then you can just use that when you create your own stuff. Use that information. But you need to learn how to do it first. If you try to do, like, just do it yourself on your own model and your own design all at the same time, it, it might take you a lot longer. Is symmetry still not on? I'm gonna. Okay, jeez. In this limit, the surrounding bright lights sparkle in the night. Move so fast, it's hypnotizing. Take my hand and guide me home. Break of days on. Oh, I had to save this. Now we can actually go in here and clean up his teeth. Look nice and sharper. Alright, let's let's just sharpen these guys up. Not good. One more time. Nice little shadow in there. Good morning, crowd. What's up, Ed? How you doing? Are you just waking up? It's probably, what, 6 in the morning for you or something? Something crazy? 8 a.m.
Uh, wow, this tooth got really large or something. Let's see, what, how can I clean this up? We'll still run our, um, our polish pass again over this stuff. We'll get something really, really nice and clean. Even though this probably baked really, really nice already, to be honest. But some sections are still a little pixelated, so I want to clean those guys up. Look how much sharper that already got. What? Jesus, welcome in. Cheaty internet man, I don't know how you guys do it. It would drive me crazy. So I pay for like the extra, extra fast connection here with Comcast. I mean, I have to, you know, but still, it doesn't seem that crazy fast. Drawing a picture right now? Guess who it is? Hmm. Hmm. Dota reporter. Totally Dota reporter. That was too easy. It's crud. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Looks like a shark. Derp. <laughs> oh, really, Sabrina? <laughs> I said Dota reporter. Those world trolls. That's not good, what am I doing?
The long lost twins? <laughs> Created by aliens? Wow, the plot thickens. <laughs> uh, Manny, what happens when one of you sets that you guys create, those, those, they don't get into the game? Can you still use the files to use them in game? Uh, yeah, sort of. You can replace the files, like the default files, on your machine. But uh, I think they've been messing around with that stuff for the past year, like on Valve's side. Where you can't actually be, or you know, you might get banned from Dota if they see the different files, you know, being swapped on there. Uh, but actually, hold on. I think the latest thing they did is they just don't allow you to uh, use um, to use uh, one of the codes, you know, on your launch settings that allow you to change the setting to actually use the models. So even if you tried, I don't think they ban you anymore because they just set it up in a way that you can't actually, you know, the game will actually just load the, the default ones that they got. So you can't really change them any longer. You can do it locally, you know, and test them, do it in Dota test and all that stuff. But for in-game, in-game, uh, yeah, I think Valve kind of nuked it. Which makes sense. That's what happened. Oh shit! Voting for the for the mount, our Abaddon mount, which we want to make a full set for or a companion hero bundle with. Uh, fairly soon, I think. Hopefully, the mount makes it into the majors, though. That'd be great. Split does some crazy stuff with my sound. <laughs> but nonetheless, man, crowd, welcome back, dude. Appreciate the support. Thanks, buddy. Got your candle dancing. Got your remotes back. Got your Matt Havisher badge. All good stuff, dude. <laughs> Jello shot. I know, man. Hopefully, uh, we get some some Jello and we can make more Jello shots over the weekend. Was it super loud? Or are you guys just trolling? You guys are trolling. I can't even believe you guys anymore. <laughs> You'll take it for me? Damn it, you do. You, you made so many jelly shells, dude. Oh, I wish I had some. I'll have to buy some jello. Not forget. Never forget. Alright, let's eat up into some of these wood. Wood, ya? Let's do it. Kill it, kill it, kill it. And then we'll do the bolts at the end, like this little placeholder here, the one that I did. We'll sharpen it. Nice and visible. And maybe pull a couple of those bolts into the the lion skull itself. Lion medallion. 
like a it's like a boxer's name. They also have like really shitty rhyming in their names. Maybe this bolt's missing too. <laughs> Jello shots. I remember when we made that emoticon. We we made it on the air uh, a long time ago. You guys remember that? Hey, thank you, Fred. Yeah, we, we started uh, earlier tonight, and yeah, it came kind of kind of quick actually. The wood is taking me way longer. Ugh. But we'll finish. We'll finish the wood at least, and the medallion. I don't know about the outside of the wheel. I might have to wait for tomorrow, but we'll finish the rest, the hard stuff. these guys a little bit better. Clean up. Up, hold up, hold up. Let's And we'll have some uh, nice flat section up here so that that bakes into the normal map fairly well. And with up here, we're gonna give some space. Top view. Flatten those sections out. Very cool. Pretty good. Nose looks a lot better now. Make more room for our bake. Cleaner texture.
Nice and sharp. Pass him out. Go oh, indeed. Guys, yeah, it's almost done. Kind of the one I covered the barnacles. So nice and smooth. Come on, see, brush. Give me a good angle here. That'll do. Uh, my baking in sea brush. No, we actually use X normal to bake our stuff. Good. Better.
Okay, okay. Go back to the wood. Ah, my hand's crapping up. I just eat away at some of these wood. Cut off some pieces. This chunk goes all the way past half. But rot it away. There's a little splinter still alive in there. But the rest we're gonna chop. Uh, maybe one of these sides is missing quite a bit, but let's put on the durag really quick so we can see where we want to actually show that. Because yeah, see, like the durag actually had <laughs> this really cool li left side here. Ah, we didn't do that much there, I guess. We're still good. Oh man, all these pieces together are gonna look fantastic in game. It'll be worth it. All this crazy work. Where's his hair? Where's his hair? Hey, more! Yeah, we did the whole skull thing on the on the medallion, just like clinks, right? Same kind of curse. I thought it was very befitting. Yeah, so keeping the, the wood more plain like this actually contrasts the, all the other detail really well, even though we still have quite a bit to do on the wood. Um, I think it was the right call not to go too crazy with it or add... I help to all my own. Um, add runes or, you know, more fantasy shit on it. Alright, now if I was to break one of these guys up, I think this bottom right one would, would be the best choice. Take a huge chunk out of over here. Whoops. Let's do it the other way. Whole bit is gonna be all ripped up and old and crepid. Maybe with a little bit of a floating piece.
Maybe even more. And you're like, what the hell's he doing? Hold on, man, give me a second. I'm onto something here. And if I put the gems where the eyes are, or precious metals or something, uh, precious metals on the, on the eyes. Well, they're gonna be glowing green. I mean, there's no. It's just gonna be glowing green stuff on the texture for the eyes. So, not really anything we we can really really push for the eyes. You know, like if they were lit up, gems would work out, and then we would make it faster dead and all that. But they're gonna be glowing green, so. I think it'll be alright. Probably don't want to do anything more crazy on them. Some different cracks to them. You notice these little small little details in game? Uh, yeah, when you zoom in you'll see a lot of like these cracks will actually you know create a little bit of that, that darkness for us because they're being they're not only this uh, we're combining a whole bunch of different bakes together so we have our normal map we have our lighting passes we have our materials we have our curvature pass our cavity pass emit occlusion uh, colors and then painting on top of that so all those things combined actually start, you know, refining a lot of these little details with ambient occlusion, all those things, and the curvature map to really bring the, the little bits on the outside of the shadow to kind of create a bevel at the same time on the texture. And uh, where do I have Photoshop open? Let me show you real quick. Stuff. 
So these are the clink shoulder item, and it's it's really early on. But let me show you a quick curvature map here. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Bit occlusion, gradients. What is this? Duplicate it. Okay, so this is the lighting from the top that I used. So that's not the map I'm looking for. Ah, here it is, cavity map. So with this map here, let me take it off so you guys can see it. And I'll zoom in. You see a lot of those little scratches that I did, and then uh, the, the way that this map works, it adds a little bit of a height map to the areas around it. So when when you add this map as a, what do we do, like a high, uh, vivid light? Like, I, I also added some colors and some other passes onto that map itself. But see, this is without the map. See, it's a lot more uh, blurry, and you don't get that really nice definition on a lot of these barnacles. This map, all those things get a lot sharper. And yeah, there's a lot of blacks in here that I have to get rid of, and a lot of hand painting to make it a lot smoother and get rid of a lot of the, a lot of the detail that is on the big pieces that I want to be more of a resting point for your eye. So I kind of did a lot of uh, hand painting over here for this loin cloth that I'm blocking right now with myself on the camera. Uh, right down here. So see, that's a lot smoother and the detail really just stays more in the crevices. So I'll be doing a lot more of that, even this is not really done, it's just like a first pass on it, the red loin cloth. Uh, but same kind of thing, I'll do a hand painted job over everything to make everything super crisp and painterly and keep the detail where we need it. Uh, so that's that's where we're going with, uh, with the sculpts that you've seen right now on the back item. So even if when I zoom out, you know, all those little details work together to create bigger shadows and make everything still pretty readable. And then for those people that like zooming in and seeing the detail, you know, we got you covered. The top light one, Nakarak, that was just the green channel from a world space normal map. So we bake both a tangent space normal map, which the game uses for your actual high polygon stuff, and we also bake a world space normal map. Both are options you can find in X normal. And the world space one, uh, you can grab, it's more directional, uh, that's why it's called world space, right? And you can't mirror stuff with a world space, so yeah, most games use the tangent space because you can mirror stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the... The green channel is actually the top lighting, so if you grab that and use it as a multiplier, overlay, or soft light, or something like that in Photoshop, you end up getting the highlights just from the top and some shadows underneath, which is the, the game view and the lighting model f uh, for Dota more than anything, so that'll help you out. Is Polycan a concern? Absolutely. We have poly counts that we need to follow in order to be able to submit stuff for the game. So here you can see our low polygon stuff. And back there you can see the information for each item. I keep it all in the scene so I know exactly how many polygons I need for the different LOD levels. The levels of detail. Uh, there's two different LODs. You can see the high number, the low number, and then the texture space for that, spe that specific item. I don't know if you guys can see that in the back. Yeah, you guys can see it. Uh, you do the same with the bent normal from normal. Mm -hmm. From X normal, yep. Yeah, they actually they even have like the... Uh, like cavity map, curvature maps and things as well, right? Check it all out. But I find it limited when designing lower poly stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that's the trick, right? It's trying to fit something more unique into that poly count and that space. Uh, for example, this guy, uh, this is usually you get like a shoulder item for clinks, you know, with other sets or whatever, a default set. Uh, this is our shoulder item. 
So we packed all that into the one item. And I had to do a, a lot of little tricks and clever things to, to pack it all in there. And for the head item, instead of just uh, like the default item has horns. Uh, let me show you. This is our, our head item. We have hair, a durag, huge ribbons, and a demon's edge dagger. So yeah, we, we really like trying to design something that is really unique and trying to cover up or extend that part of that uh, different models across as long as they don't like eat onto, uh, onto the space of other models, which th in this case we, we don't and we we never do really. We, we're really careful about that. And that way we can spread the, you know those pieces a little bit farther than just the shoulder or just the head, you know. And that way you get more um, a stronger design. You just have to know really the limitations and the tricks to be able to fit all that, all that density and those those extra pieces to have you know that texture, uh, those that space and the UVs for those meshes take space, and they eat away at your texture definition. So you have to mirror a lot of things and twist and deform things that you won't notice and extend that over to sections that you will see most of the time, so that resolution is still you know as good as the in-game model. So yeah, it's it just. Um, have to uh, really uh, design it cleverly so that it works out. Trying to do more with less, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, custom animations? Uh, no, we could, but we're not doing any custom animations or special effects or anything for him so that it works right off the bat for Bob and they can put it into a, into a, a chest sooner than later. Otherwise, we'd have to wait for uh, some tools that they're working on for Source 2 that would, you know, for special effects and all the other crazy stuff that we've done for our passives, which are on hold still. Over here, I'm gonna create a little bit of a deeper crevice so that it kind of creates more of a shadow. And from far away, so you see that section a little bit more. And it gets thinner towards the middle and then hard, uh, deep again and, and a harder shadow towards where it meets the other wood plank. We're playing around with contrasts while sculpting, using uh, our shadows and depth. Thin out those cracks. Be very nice and readable. Hey, Luis, bienvenido. ¿Cómo estás? <laughs> no, William. Actually, I have no idea when that's coming out. I don't know why, but that dog loves rubbing himself all over my soccer bag. It doesn't smell or anything, it's clean. Hey, 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 hey! Try to bet. Not your soccer bag proof. Carried away. Storm spirits, the shracks, Linus. Bloodseeker, oh god, yeah, Bloodseeker's everywhere. I'm just happy when he's on my team, so I was like, yeah, time to play some Undying. Destroy. I think the last game we played, we had a ridiculous amount of healing. We had Dazzle, uh, Undying, which was me. Uh, somebody bought uh, Mech. We had Legion Commander. Oh god, who was the other person? But yeah, like they would come in with like their nukes and shit, and we just heal right up and just destroy them. 
It was so one-sided. It got crazy. And they had house car and everything and he couldn't do anything against us. It was a fun game. Uh, you know what? I don't... I don't think we even had an Omni. No, we had an Omni one game. I don't know if that was the game we had an Omni with though. I don't think we had an Omni that game. That's why I was like, holy crap, we have so much healing and it was, it was surprising. They couldn't hurt us. I mean, they hurt us, but we just healed right back up with like three or three or four heroes. It's awesome. Double tombstone? No, I didn't go refresher. I only do that when we're just like completely destroying and I'm not caring. If I'm like doing really well, I'm not gonna, you know, go crazy and do that. But if we have like a, a really good carry and he's just completely snowballed out of control, at that point then I can be silly and get double tombstone. Let's see, I feel like we need to cut this here somewhere. mad and blur my eyes this line I feel extends a little bit too much but this is gonna be a gap it's just kind of misleading right now because we haven't really polished it or it has no color but you know if I was to add a little bit of the color of where the wood is gonna be more darker or lighter or whatever or the contrast where the feathers lie I think it'll give us a really good idea what the hell we're we doing Uh, maybe a little bit more down here so this whole area looks like the more broken up one and we have uh, some other like floating pieces like these little two guys those guys look really good notice that from a distance right away oh Luis <laughs> Jesus. Uh, let's see one shot area you got a PA just wrecked them with repel Omni's amazing yeah dude I've only I've seen a carry Omni just a couple of times and it's always fun when that happens. Du double battle fury? Birds and battle fury. Damn. Yeah, let's keep breaking up this side, I think. Uh, but I need to undo all that masking. Okay. Let's see. Whereabouts do we cut this up? This is all gonna be... broken up. Maybe... Maybe right here.
<laughs> oh, we've answered that question before, man. So in game, he doesn't really hold an arrow. He just pulls the string, and the arrow, you know, it's a it's a magic arrow, right? So he just spawns. So all he needs to do is just pull on the string with his hook, man, and he's he's game. It's all good. Don't worry about it. He got it covered. Do a quick little paint here, show the contrast that I, we just did. Show how this is gonna look once we texture it. Nice darks. Oops. That looks good. Grab those, pull the arrow, and it looks like crap. I mean, Clink's, I mean, Clink's just pulls the string, and that's when the string appears, and the, it magically shoots the arrow, so yeah, we're good. There's no holding of the arrow. Custom games are not advisable at this time of the day. <laughs> no kidding. <coughs> Literally everybody in there right now is Russian. I don't know, I played with some good Russian people, man. Like, they were nice and they were good. Just luck of the draw, man. Alright, let's see, where else did we break this bad boy up? Uh, I guess it's gonna be kinda, kinda broken up up here. So we could just do this stuff with with color, but maybe a little a little a little bit more spacing between uh, some of these rips in the wood. There's a slightly stronger shadow. Pay off for us. And then I think the middle needs a little something up here. It's two together. Russian cursing? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Dubal. Yeah, those barnacles took a while, man. <laughs> Holy crap. We did all those by hand. Because we're crazy. Do a save. Go into the digs. Uh, we said we're gonna do bolts on this thing too, which we kind of forgot about.
I think this bolt is gonna be gone. A bit missing. Hey JP, what's up man? Your 98 minute er Angel Arena? I played it. I guess this part we need to uh, actually work on a little bit more before we do those bolts. Is that a two custom game? Yeah, oh, I, I figured that, man. Uh, Manny, I made some changes you spoke about already. Looks much better. Ah, oh, right on, dude. That's good to hear. I want a little bit of uh, some groups. To, uh, the wood so it's not just all flat and boring I hide the direct for a second. I'm talking to my dark and shadows. This love is too Whoops. But they far. I don't know. Far too far. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa.
If we add barnacles to this thing, uh, those barnacles will have to be done tomorrow. I'm not sure my hand can do this much sea brush in one night. I've been pressing a little too strong when I was polishing that stupid skull. Random blobs everywhere. <laughs> and a little diversity to the wood. And then we polish right over top a little bit. And you get some really nice groups, very wood like. Look how much nicer that is. This rotten old wood, man, it would have roofs all over the place. Especially on these broken sections, when I want to bring it up quite a bit. These bolts kind of broke the wood at the same time, you know? Kind of cool. And we're gonna make our items a little bit uh, more, a little bit more specular in them. See if we can make the clinks look a little bit on the wet side. It all dried up. See how that works out. Surprised it took that long for somebody to throw a wood joke in there. Oh, Twitch chat. guys up a little bit. I'll be okay, I'll be okay. Yeah, that's starting to read pretty alright. Still, the wood still needs a little bit of treatment, but it's getting there. Si se puede. <laughs> yes. Are you Latin, Yoshi?
the hell happened over here? You're from uh, Mexicali? Oh. Yeah, that, that counts. How strong is your Spanish? How strong is your Kung Fu? Put on the do rag on here, see how that looks. Breaks it up pretty nice. Like that. Uh, Barn so hard. Uh, you just won a game with Clinks 16, 2, and 12. Couldn't think of how much cool it would have been with uh, dressed as a pirate. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Hopefully sooner than later, man. We can we can finish this guy, throw it in there, and uh, maybe Bob li loves it and puts it into the game for you guys. But yeah, dude. Uh, Abyss is gonna be skinning this today, uh, which hey, I'm four minutes in, so it is today. He's gonna be skinning it and putting it into the game, and enemy's gonna start baking the head items, the gloves, and now we're almost finished with the back, so we'll finish the back tomorrow. And then move on to the bow. Hopefully we can finish the, uh, the the wheel tomorrow and then the bow, we can at least get a really good start in it. Wait, what's today? Today Thursday? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be working this tomorrow. Uh, so I guess the head itself will also be darker metal. I had to do rack for a second here. And of course it's gonna have the eyes as green, but I'll just take away their color just so we have the contrast, light contrast. And bounce light on there. Mimic a little bit of the glow. throw a different material in there and see a little bit more metallic how it might read but then the wood got metallic well you guys get the idea nice and readable and this is gonna be dark as well they're just not dark right now they'll go together with the metal the dark metals that we're seeing right now Let's see what the do rag on top. Actually, I guess this would be metal as well, this bolt. Got some contrast to these guys. Uh, 
Have a good night, Yoshi. Get your rest. Midnight in California. Ooh. All right, I think uh, we're gonna call it because I don't want to destroy my hand. I want to be able to work tomorrow. So tomorrow we will come back here. We will finish the detailing on the wood. Do some scratches and things like that on the medallion and on the outside frame. We'll finish the handles, which are supposed to be metal as well for the for the wheel. And then oh, there's also arrows. Forgot about the arrows. So I guess we gotta do the arrows tomorrow. Where are you guys hiding? There you go. Arrows will take us like 10 minutes. Not gonna be difficult. Actually, there's only one uh, th that the other ones are kind of mirrored on the texture. So it's only uh, this top guy that we actually have to sculpt. And oh, we also need to add the the holes. Hey, I kind of already added this one. <laughs> uh, the front here. You know, let's go back. Let's do it right now. Now we're gonna scorch this area a little bit, like it got burnt as well. Thank you for saving at that exact point. You wanna play some dotes? I do kinda wanna play some dotes. Oh shit. Uh, I gotta head to Durag real quick here. Arrow goes right into the... Oh good, right into the... just before the metal. Lucky. Split this wood a little bit up here. From the hit. And the other one actually goes into the medallion. Ooh. Right on his cheek. Actually, no, just outside of the cheek. Alright, so we'll just kind of cut into it here. It's gonna be metal, so it's not gonna really crack. Gonna like push it out of the way. I'm 
and then ball jump around the edges. Back on. Oh. Save. Save over that one. That's cool. Hey, Predicator, man. What's up? How you doing? I saw you playing earlier, dude. I forget what hero you're using. Uh, but I was checking something out in Dota. And I saw you were in there. How'd you do? Did you, how many games did you, did you play and how many did you win? Any Clinks games? By any chance? Should be fun to texture. All these caught up things in there and the, the maps uh, should be pretty good, pretty easy. Hey, Davian, welcome back, man. Yeah, we're about finished here, dude. Uh, we uh, finished the medallion, we added some uh, the, the wood sections as well. Uh, I still need to finesse them a little bit and then figure out if we're gonna put barnacles all over this thing. Or maybe we just put them towards the bottom, perhaps? I don't know. I think it needs a few. Maybe we just do, like, maybe a some in the big crevices up here. And some uh, closer to more than the bottom, perhaps. All down here, by this broken section. And over here by the direct, maybe a little bit. And a little bit here. I'll keep this top part more, a little bit more clean. That might work out. You need to play more Dota 2? Your last and first game in Reborn, you guys lost the match. Ah, crap. What do you guys think of the new weather effects? Uh... You know, I kind of like the dust one, but I feel like it hides, like it's a little too strong sometimes. And really, what I was really hoping was to see like the actual ground change to like to sand, you know, and all that. But they don't really change the maps, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sure they'll do that later on, but I was I was hoping it'd be more sand. Kind of like the the custom game, right? Nice catch. Yes, I am. Does the trend is soon to be released? Soon, you say? I don't know. Oh crap, we gotta do the wood in the back too. Damn! Alright, I guess we'll do that tomorrow too. I'll be a little more simple in the back though, because it's gonna be darker. And it's less resolution too. Hmm.
Oh, yeah, the emblem came out pretty, right? Talking about special effects for Dota 2, have you thought about creating a new one? It's possible that Valve uh, will open the doors for new effects, uh, cinematic special effects made by the community for the workshop, Predicator says in Spanish. Uh, maybe. I mean, I mean, what what else is is left? <laughs> I don't know. I find them they, they they're too distracting to be honest. I just I, I like I was trying all them out, and like maybe the new green one, but that one's like it kills a lot of the colors. But it's cool if you're undying. And then the dust one looks really cool, but again, it's a little too strong at some points. Without a desert map, it, it desert like the entire desert train, it doesn't make sense. Maybe with desert train, it'll look amazing. So maybe at that point, I'll turn it on. But yeah, I don't I don't really use the weather effects for my game. And will we ever make one? I don't know. Not sure. I gotta be more excited over the new trains, I think, before we... for that. I don't know. Okay. Alright, so there's Clinks with his coat. Pirate boots. His pirate glove. His pirate hook with wood and wraps around it. Barnacles, everybody, everywhere. Got his his hair all tied up. Little metal coins and little leather bits. We have his durag with barnacles and long, long straps that wrap around our wheel. His boat wheel also has the medallion sculpted in the middle of it, which is also a skull, like himself. <laughs> Have some arrows kind of pinning down the, his, his durag on the back. And we have, oh yeah, the dagger. His demon sedge dagger that he's gonna have in his mouth. Like a good pirate. And down here we have, well, I'll show you guys in a little poly. We have his anchor bow. Which we still need to do in Seabrush. So we'll probably jump on that on probably Sunday. And then tomorrow we'll finish off the wheel. We should be able to finish that tomorrow. Hey Pyro! Uh, we're working on a clink set for Dota 2, man. We've been doing the high poly seat brushing for it. Uh, the moonlight effect has the crazy dragonflies that scare the crap out of you when they come close to the camera. <laughs> Any tips on texturing in Photoshop? You can't seem to get it right. Oh man, that's a that's a hell of a question. Ooh, you can't seem to be texturing right. Okay, so uh, try getting a head a head start on your texturing by baking out an ambient occlusion map in X normal. And I wish do I have Photoshop open still? Nope. Uh, but yeah, usually that's what we do. We do like a light map bake using our high poly stuff and our ambient occlusion, which creates all the little shadows the, that go in between all the crevices. And from there we can start, you know. Uh, Texturing on top of that and you get something really accurate and you get all of your de detail that you sculpted out of your your sea brush onto your texture and then from there on you can just start you know hand painting the rest of it and doing all the pretty stuff and painterly stuff if that's the style that you're going for or, or adding uh, photo reference on top of detail for stone or whatever the hell you're doing right you can you can go from there on but getting that initial starting point using your ambient occlusion is a really really good thing so if you're not doing that you should probably try that. Oh man, not internet for that long. Ooh. I don't know, man. That sounds crazy. Uh, but yeah, here's here's our clinks. Without his coat. <laughs> and his regular boots that look silly. And we gave him brand boots from the dotes. Boots of speed. And they're also weak, minimal a little more piratey, so we kind of make this flare, this guy's uh, flare up on the side. And same with his pirate gloves. Uh, they should read really, really well from uh, from top view. Whoops. Our pirate clinks. I can't wait to do the loading screen for this guy. It's gonna be so cool. Coming out of the water with fire and it's maybe... I don't know if I... Yeah, I guess we gotta do the boat in the back. Oh god, but it's gonna be so much work. 
maybe all broken up and more in like fog. I can do the boat in the back, maybe on fire too. I have to think about that. Yeah. But yeah, there we go guys, uh, almost done the wheel, got it close, I wasn't sure we are going to be able to finish, but I mean, we'll be able to finish this tomorrow. Oh god, okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, yeah, we'll, we'll stop the stream, I'm actually pretty hungry too, so I gotta get